Hey guys, it's Karen in my review for the latest Netflix film, The Ballad of Buster Scruggs. And the plot of The Ballad of Buster Scruggs, there really isn't a distinctive plot here. It really is just a collection of short films, all spanning from the Old West, and basically all have to deal with various complex themes, and that's really all I'm going to say. So, The Ballad of Buster Scruggs overall, I was obviously hyped for this film. I mean, hearing the Coen brothers had a film out on Netflix, that just sounded like a recipe for success. Uh, knowing, you know, the kind of stuff that they put out, I was very excited to see how this film would turn out, and I'm very happy to say that The Ballad of Buster Scruggs, for the most part, is very successful. This is a very well done anthology film that really is a lot more deep and complex than I was really expecting, but that's really why I love it as as much as I do. Now, considering that this is a anthology film, I'm going to structure this review a little bit differently. Instead of me talking about, um, you know, the film as a whole, I'm just going to talk about each short on its own, and then I will talk about how it works overall as a film, so we're just going to get started. So, the first short, of course, is called The Ballad of Buster Scruggs. And what this short is essentially about is we center on, of course, the character of Buster Scruggs. He is your typical, very uh, high-spirited cowboy. He's always very joyful and positive, and he likes to sing a lot. But he also has to do a lot of lethal killing, and things start to get a bit complicated when this uh, fight in a bar arises, and it's pretty much just seeing him go through like his daily life. And I really loved this short a lot. I thought this was a really great introduction to the film. It's a lot of fun uh, to watch here. I mean, just uh, right off the bat, Tim Blake Nelson just absolutely kills it as Buster Scruggs. He's so likable, yet he's also a badass. And you can see this is someone who really doesn't give a shit. If he has to kill, he will kill, and he will always try to come out back on top, and I really love that about Buster Scruggs. However, there is something a bit devastating about this film as well. Because of his very sort of positive attitude, you see that this has a very negative effect on him. Nobody else really understands why is he so happy all the time? Why is he so joyful about things? And I really liked getting into that. I thought they did a very good job. The film's also a lot of fun. There's a lot of funny moments around here, a lot of great cameos as well that I really did enjoy, and holy shit, do they not hold back when it comes to um, the blood as well. I mean, this film is so bloody, there are a lot of crazy killings here. One in particular, I was like, holy shit, I couldn't believe they actually went there. Um, but the cinematography is really great. The opening shot especially I really loved here, and I just think this is a very good short overall. It does not end the way you think it's going to. It actually ended in kind of a somber direction, and the message that the film leaves you with I thought was very interesting. I really enjoyed this one a lot. I thought it was a really great way to start things off, and for me, I'm going to give this short overall um, a B+. Plus. So the second short in this film is called New Algoldons. And what this one is essentially about is James Franco plays this outlaw who he's trying to rob a bank, but before he can do that, the teller is already onto him, and we start to realize that the teller is a lot more powerful than Franco may think he is. And this, for me, was easily the weakest short. I really almost... I, I the, All of these shorts are good to great, but this, for me, is the weakest one, and it's for two reasons. Franco is not one of them. Franco does do a very good job here playing this outlaw, someone who you can tell he's very relentless, he's not really going to let anyone get in his way, but the, my problem with this short is that it's simply way too short. The other ones... You know, they're not necessarily lawn, but they give the necessary time to flesh things out, and this one I just didn't really feel anything towards. It starts off, and you know very early on where it is going to go, so the fact that it ends in a place that is very predictable, and it just didn't really do much of anything for me, just didn't really work here. I get what they were trying to do, but this to me felt like a short that they came up with at the last minute and could have easily cut out. I really was not the biggest fan of this one. I think that definitely 
Um, it's one of those shorts where this was originally supposed to be a TV series, and I think if this was a TV episode, I would have enjoyed this a lot more, because we could have fleshed out this character a lot more, because I really did not give a shit about who Franco's character was, and it just didn't really work for me at all. Again, cinematography is really good here, Franco is really good, but other than that, there's not really too much to like about this one. I found it really boring and short, and this is the only one, like I said, I really didn't like it all that much. New Algal Dons is unfortunately going to get a C. Now, I really do love a lot of the shorts in this film, but these next four are all uniformly amazing. I mean, I really do think all of these four alone are enough of a reason to watch this film. Especially this third one, which a lot of people seem to take a lot of issue with, and that, of course, is Meal Ticket. And this one is essentially about, we see that there is this uh, showman, basically, who he performs a lot of Shakespearean, like, he recites a lot of Shakespeare and things like that, but he has no arms and legs, and we realize that he is being hired by this imprazio, uh, played by Liam Neeson, who basically has to, de who is completely dependent who he's completely dependent upon, and we start to see the effect that this starts to have on his career, and also what this starts to do to Neeson's character. And I loved this short. I thought this was very depressing, for sure, but I thought it was also very insightful. And a lot of people aren't going to like this one because it is really slow. Out of all of the shorts in this film, this is easily the slowest, and I totally understand why people didn't like it. I didn't like it at first, but the more it went on, the more I became really captivated by what this short was trying to say. Because at, at first glance, you think that maybe these two are father and son. Maybe Neeson is trying to help... Um, his son, who doesn't have arms and legs, achieve this dream of wanting to become a performer, even if it's not sustainable. Um, maybe that's what's going on. But then you start to realize that these two don't really talk to each other. They both have their own sort of problems that they're dealing with, their own insecurities, but they never really talk to each other about it. And it's very strange overall. And you start to realize that Neeson really views him as property. And it is disgusting to think about, but Neeson kills it in this role. I mean, and you see behind this guy. This is a guy who is focused on one thing, and that thing is money. He will do whatever he can to make himself money, and if it's not good for him anymore, then he will just put it aside. And that's very much what he does to the character of Harrison. Harrison is someone who he knows that his fate is kind of imminent, and he can't really get out of it, unfortunately. He knows that this isn't going to last a very long time, and where the short ends up going, it's devastating, and yeah, it is really fucked up, but that stuff does happen, and that's something that I think the short does a very good job at telling. It's not just trying to say that, you know, what Neeson is doing is wrong, because, I mean, no shit, it's wrong. It's trying to say that this is something that still happens today. The entertainment industry, I mean, something will become popular, and then when it's not, it's, like, obliterated from existence, as if it didn't happen. You know, some people might go back to it, but a lot of the time, that celebrity will become irrelevant and will be shunned from society, and that's a lot of what this short is really trying to get into. The idea that, you know, sure, fame does come with a, pr you know, fame is great, but it does come with a price, and when you have someone like Neeson, who is completely dependent upon you, he really does seal your fate. You are no longer in control of your own fate, and again, it's it's just a really crazy concept to think about. It is something that I think is going to disturb many, and I can understand why a lot of people have not enjoyed this one, but I found this one to be endlessly compelling. It's one that I really can't stop thinking about ever since I watched it, and that's when you know it's had an impact. This is not a very long short, mind you. It's only like seven or eight minutes long, but it really does, I think, um, make every single second worth it. Uh, I was really into this one a lot. I think this was a very compelling uh, one to watch, and I am going to give Meal Ticket overall an A-. minus. So the next one is called All, All Gold Canyon, and this one is essentially about this prospector played by Tom Waits. He's someone who pretty much has spent all his life uh, gold digging, and he's trying to find this deposit known as Mr. Pocket, and it basically is seeing him trying to find it and seeing if he will actually be successful. 
And this one as well, I really loved. And uh, right off the bat, Tom Waits is just so great in this short film. He really is the only main actor here, but he's someone who's very compelling. You see that this is someone who has spent a lot of time uh, trying to find just this one piece of gold. It's the one thing that really does matter to him. He won't rest until he finds it. And you really are rooting for him to find it. You understand why he is so indebted to it. You see his determination. And I really enjoy seeing that here. He just does such a great job, and something that this one really embraces is its positivity. It's trying to show that while there is a lot of human cruelty in the world, the good guys can win at points, and I think that's something that the Coen brothers did a good job with, because a lot of these shorts are very depressing, and this one's really not. It's a lot more uplifting, because Tom Waits actually does succeed. Spoiler alert, Tom Waits does actually succeed in the end, and I thought that was a very smart choice overall. Also, the cinematography in this is amazing. I mean, just watching Tom Waits uh, dig through all the gold, trying to get to uh, Mr. Pocket, it's just captivating. It is mesmerizing to look at, and there's some truly immaculate cinematography going on here, and I just really love this one overall. There's a lot of great cinematography in this film, but I think this short overall has the best cinematography for me. It's very easy to watch. It's literally just him digging through gold, but it is definitely a very satisfying watch, and one that I definitely enjoyed a lot. Um... I really did love where this ended up going. Once again, though, my only complaint is similar to some of the other ones, where I just wish that uh, I think they could have fleshed this one out just a little bit more. But from what we got here, I thought it was very well done. I thought it was definitely a very good short to watch. Again, you see the passion that he really does have, and the gold dinghy is really not going to let anyone get in his way of achieving this goal. And I love seeing him come out on top. It was a very good short overall. It's the most uplifting of the bunch, and I really love this one a lot. And I'm going to give this one the same grade I gave Meal Ticket, which is an A-. minus. Alright, so the next short is called The Gal Who Got Rattled. And this one is essentially about this uh, woman named Alice uh, Lonabau, and her and her older brother, they have this plan where they're going to go towards Oregon, but things take a turn when Gilbert unfortunately ends up dying of cholera, and basically Alice is now all out on her own, and the rest of the short is her trying to kind of come to terms with his death and seeing if she can maybe move on when this uh, new, when when one of the uh, people who are, uh, you know, part of the wagon train leaders, Billy Knapp, actually starts to take interest in her, and the whole short is can she move on from this, you know, can she have this life with Billy and maybe settle down, and that's really all I'm going to say. And, oh my god, I adored every single second of this short. I mean, there's a lot of great stuff here, but this is easily the best one for me. Not only is this one so complex and so much more, I think, emotional than the other ones in this film, but it is the longest, and to me, it feels like the one that could have easily been a feature-length film. I mean, the second this started, I was so into it. We get a very good understanding of this is the Lonabau family. This is their goal. This is what they're really trying to do. You know, they want to try to find a husband for Alice. But you also see that Alice is someone who... Um, you know, she's someone that does depend on a man, unfortunately, and you can see that she's someone who isn't, uh, who is very obedient, and you see what that does to her. The, the, it really is about being pragmatic, and that's something that Alice, it, it does unfortunately get the best of her, but Kazan just kills it in this role. I really loved her here a lot, and what I love about Zoe Kazan in particular is that she doesn't have that one big, like, freakout scene. You're waiting for it to happen, but she's very composed throughout most of this, and you can tell that Gilbert's death, it has a big impact on her, but it's just not something she really wants to show. It's something that she wants to remain very composed about, and I think it was very well done in that sense, but when you factor Bill into it, and you see this as someone that really does want to help her, and really does care about her, there is something really sweet and genuine. There's a great scene with them talking uh, in front of this campfire, and they're hearkening back on some of Gilbert's memories, and you can see how Billy is really helping her move past this, and I thought it was a very effective scene overall. But what I love the most about this short is actually the way it ends, which I'm not going to spoil because it is without a doubt the most shocking of the bunch, but where this ends up going 
it's devastating. It really is, but it, it really does get its point across once again about human indecency and about death. That's a big theme of this entire film, and I think this one probably did it the best. I mean, the way this ends, it ends in a way, like I said, that's not only shocking, but ends in a way that just feels so complete. It feels like, you know, it feels like things were turning out perfect, and then this one situation happens, and it just derails everything, and I thought it was a really great idea overall. This short is very complex. It's very emotional. It might be hard for some to get through because it is the longest of the bunch, but for me, it never wasted a single second of its runtime. I was into this one pretty much throughout the whole thing. I love the story that this one ended up telling. I thought the cinematography especially uh, was beautiful. Beautiful here. It's not as great as the Tom Waits one. That by far has the best cinematography out of any of them, but I really love this one a lot. And like I said, I could have watched an entire film just about this one character, about Alice Lawnabout, getting a bit more into her. And I think knowing that, it just shows how masterful, uh, how masterfully written this really is. Like I said, for me, it is by far the best of the bunch, and I'm definitely going to give The Girl Who Got Rattled in A. Alright, so the last short in this film is, of course, called The Mortal Remains. And this one is essentially kind of like a Clue Hateful Eight type of thing, where it's centering on five different people. They're all in this station wagon, and they're all going to what seems like, like a mortuary or a funeral home or something like that. We realize that they all have different beliefs, and as the short goes on, we start to realize that some of the characters that are populating this vehicle might have more sinister beliefs than they essentially lead on. And this one, once again, I really loved. I think this short is very well done, especially when it comes to establishing the characters. I mean, they're so interesting here, the different approaches that they have. And I wouldn't say there really is one standout, because I think all of them really do work out well together. Tyne Daly, uh, Lee, uh, uh, Brendan Gleeson, uh, Chelsea Ross, Sal Rubinick, all of them just kill it in this short. And again, they all have very different viewpoints, especially when it comes to religion. And I thought that overall, all was very interesting. They do such a great job of setting up their religious, political, but also beliefs about death and things like that. I mean, it's a very complex short. And that really is my biggest issue with it. My biggest issue with the short is that while I do enjoy it a lot, and I think it's really well set up, it ends right as it's about to get interesting. And again, I don't necessarily have a huge problem with that if it would have been a bit more satisfying. And it's not like the Franco one. The Franco one gave me almost nothing to work with. This one gave me a lot to work with. There's a lot of great character stuff they set up here. There's a lot of interesting dilemmas that they're going through. The dynamics between the characters are really interesting. And just when you think it's about to go somewhere, it just kind of ends. And again, I think this is another case where I think it would have been benefited a little bit more if this was a TV episode. I think we could have fleshed out these characters just a bit more and I would have felt a bit more satisfied with it and because in the end it just felt like there was something missing it felt like it was a it was just it was it just started to get going and then it just kind of ended and again I enjoy this one a lot I love the darker contrast here it's a very dark and very grimy but it also is fun like this is definitely a lot of these are very depressing but this one as well it has some really witty and fun dialogue to it like I said those characters bickering they're just great they're all nailing it in their performance performances and you know again I really do love a lot of things about it I love the mystery aspect where we don't know what's going on but the way it ends it just felt a little bit unsatisfying but that really doesn't take away from how much I ended up enjoying the moral remains and this one I am also going to give a B plus so, in the end, this sh film ends up coming off very successfully. I think there's a lot of things here that works, and some things that don't. Like I said, all of the acting here is really great. I think everyone really does give really strong performances. The cinematography is really great here. And the theme that this film is trying to portray, I think, is really compelling. The idea of death, but not just death. That death is something that is unavoidable. It's random. It's not something that you can just easily predict. You know, you may be able to get out of it, but death will always catch up to you. Death will always find you. And again, without spoiling how a lot of these ends, um, 
they don't end in very happy endings. It's really only that one that I said that does end in a happy ending. Uh, most of these end in a very somber way, and I think that's definitely what the Coen brothers were trying to get across here. The idea that death is something that just isn't, um, you know, it's something that is unavoidable and something that you just can't stop from happening because it is eventually going to get you, and I think that's a very good message overall. But another thing they're trying to do, clearly, is the idea of human indecency. How even in the Old West, if you're someone that is as cheerful and as fun as Buster Scruggs, you will always run into despicable people. People who will do nothing but basically force you to kill them. And, you know, if it's your life on the line, you, know, you have to do whatever you can to get away from them. And I think it's a very good idea overall, the way that theme was portrayed here. And I think it's something that definitely looms all over this film, and I really do love those two themes overall. I think it's a very interesting idea, and I like the different tones here. Some of these films are very fun, but a lot of them end up coming off actually very tragic and depressing, especially the Liam Neeson one, I mean, for sure is the most depressing of the bunch, and I really do applaud the Coen brothers for going there. We expect them to have really witty and fun dialogue, and the film does deviate from that often. I like that they did that a lot uh, uh, here. However, my real problem with this film, besides uh, the Franco one, is what I already alluded to. This film was originally commissioned as a TV series, and as much as I did enjoy it, I couldn't help but wonder how much more depth could we have gotten out of some of these characters if it was, in fact, a TV series. Those two that I said are the biggest examples of it, the last one and the James Franco one. Those are two that I just really wish were a TV series, because the only one that felt like truly complete to me, because I really did love a lot of these, but the one that felt the most complete, like you didn't really need to do anything else with it, is the Zoe Kazan one and the Liam Neeson one. Those two feel the most complete to me. The Tom Waits one, I love a lot, but I do still wish there was maybe just a little bit more added there. Same with even Buster Scruggs. I mean, I just felt that it would have benefited this a little bit more if it was, in fact, a six-episode TV series. I understand that they want to turn into a movie. I'm not entirely sure why. It was very theatrical, so I do understand that, and I'm sure seeing this on theaters is just, seeing this in theaters is stunning, but I just wonder how much better some of these could have been if they were, in fact, um, you know, done as a 50-minute TV episode juxtaposed to what we did end up getting. But overall, I love this a lot. I think this was a very successful anthology film. It tells a story in a way that I really wasn't expecting it to. It is a lot of fun at points, but it really is very insightful, and it's something that I think is very much going to stick with you. Uh, and what's cool about this film so far is that I haven't really seen anyone agree on like which short is the strongest and which one is the weakest. I think really everyone is going to get something out of this film, and I really do love that uh, the Coen brothers did that here. I think this is a very successful collection of films overall. I, you know, you can definitely tell the passion that was put into this. I think this is definitely a really great Coen Brothers film that I really appreciated a lot, and I'm definitely going to give The Ballad of Buster Scruggs overall in A-. minus. Once again, Netflix, this is the kind of stuff that you need to be doing. I'm very impressed by what I've been seeing from them. I mean, Netflix has actually been really consistent lately, and I'm hoping that this does keep up because I think that they really are starting to understand what kind of stuff they need to be, you know, acquiring. And I think this is definitely the right project to get behind. I really do encourage everyone to see it. You know, I don't think it's going to have this, quite the same impact on everyone. In fact, I know a few people, I, I know a few friends who actually didn't enjoy this nearly as much as I did, and I totally understand that, but I think it is definitely worth giving a, at least giving a watch. But that's it for this video. Hope you guys will see you guys in my next video, and we'll see you guys for that. Okay, bye.